Hi guys, I've just been playing a few games on League Chess and finally achieved my actual ranking. You know when it says a question mark when you've not played? What is this? When you, you know it says a question mark next to your name when you've not played many games? Well, I've got rid of that question mark. So, and also, windmills. We need to talk about windmills today, right? So, when you think of a windmill, we think of sort of serene Holland, you know, grass in the background and majestic scenes, perhaps grinding on the on the, the grindstone some some flour from wheat anyway anyway <laughs> right i got convoluted all right so what are we doing we got a little sicilian on the board game one i just played two games on lee chest and established my rank of like i think i'm like a 1900 on lee chest which is a interesting comparison because i'm like a 1670 1650 on chess.com so that's the sort of difference between chess.com and lee chess so I got a Sicilian on the board. I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm playing the Sicilian like a bit of a setup opening. That which it is not. You know, the Sicilian should respond specifically to their specific moves. And I sort of do the same thing every game. <laughs> which I need to I need to break this habit. I need to actually learn more theory in the Sicilian. But I get an okay position, but I'm very scared of these pawns coming forward here. Looks very dangerous. But I have this knight jump and this bishop doesn't have many squares to go. Especially after this pawn push here. Um, makes this knight jump look very friendly. Taking off their light square bishop. And of course my light square bishop is, is quite a monster. I'll, I won't lie to you guys. So I, I quite like this move. Creating an alignment issue with the knight. You know with threatening to just attack the pinned piece and win the knight. Lest they lose their queen. <laughs> I've never used that word before in my life. <laughs> but uh. So, right, so we, we, nab, we nab a little pawn in the center. Very happy because these three pawns look pretty nasty. So very happy to nab that, that central one. And offering up this pawn, but, you know, we don't care too much. I think there could be some tactics here where maybe I release the knight and there's two attackers on this knight. Just being aware we've got a lot of pressure on this diagonal. So they do take that pawn, which maybe was greedy, but I think it was okay. And I'm slightly better here. And they go for this really attacking idea, which... Generally, guys, if you've got a continuation, go for it. But in this case, they, they went for this. And I always bang on about continuation, I know. But what's the continuation, bro? What, like, okay, queen, queen back. All right, I mean, you've just sacked a piece to go queen back. I mean, it's defended twice it's defended three times this square I, i'm not too concerned so anyway how, how it happened in the game this guy sacked the knight i locked in my bishop on this beautiful outpost square um also disconnecting the queen and the knight which i was very happy about and potentially the rook in the future um, not allowing the pieces to synergize and because this guy sacked a piece i thought what would be the most annoying move i could play in the position force a queen trade so i did they reinforce, and I just capture knowing that I think I can win this pawn here. And I don't know, how, how do you find out how well you played on Lee Chess? Oh, there we go. Four inaccuracies, one blunder, two mistakes. Not awful. Average centi pawn lost 38. Is that good, guys? I, I don't know what that means. I just look at the, I just normally look at the chess.com. Um, it shows a percentage, doesn't it, on chess.com. So, all right, here we go. I mentioned windmills in the opening, guys. So this is where we had such a good opportunity. You know, if they play so much slow, we've got a hanging bishop. So th this move's gorgeous because not only does it hit the bishop, it threatens a windmill of death, guys. <laughs> all right, so, so let's say they didn't address this threat. You know, they just they move, move a pawn up. Sorry, in... In this position, if they don't address it, I don't even take the hanging bishop. I go check, and then I can just win the piece with with check. And this is what we call the windmill of death. You know, they go back. I can just go here, check again. <laughs> King goes here. I can go here, check again. And they're pretty much forced to stack the rook for this bishop. Don't you tell me this is a three-point bishop, guys. This This windmill with the rook and bishop, these two pieces are worth more than any queen I've ever seen. So... Look at that, absolutely dominant. Check, you know, they move the king, we, we just win the win the knight and 
everything trades down into a beautiful endgame. As it happened, I think my opponent has seen the windmill before and knows what terrors it can unleash and decided very wisely here to act to just straight up sack the rook he saw he saw this idea he just sacked the rook so big respect to mr jedi my opponent uh he was like a 1900 so like a 1600 chess.com and then we, we i just i love this this move here take in with this just allows me to simplify because if they ever take, I just take with check, you know. So they do take. I love taking with check because after I get to just take the bishop. The engine's saying I should go here. Oh, because the bishop is still trapped. <laughs> if it tries to escape, I can just go here and win it. Okay. So maybe yeah, fair enough. I took the I took the free piece, you know. I guess this move is is extremely greedy, but good. Recognizing the bishop is still hanging later on because of this tactic, and defending this this key pawn in the center. Because I did have to play an end game against a few past pawns, and I like this move, guys. A touch of class, if I do say so myself. Uh, just a check in order to pivot the knight back to defend the pawn here. Because otherwise, this pawn was looking a little bit scary. But I, I was very glad I found this check. The engine doesn't like this rook move, even though it wins a pawn. Because it gives up this pawn. Okay. So I find this check. <laughs> I don't know. I played this a bit too quick, guys. But I calculated here, here, here. They take. And then I pin the knight to the king and win, and win the knight. Of course, this doesn't work. Wow, they actually played... This was the best move. I, this is what I calculated. I calculated this. This. And for some reason, that's actually the best move. To leave you, their king in this pin. Can someone explain that to me in the comments, guys? I don't get that. But I, th I thought the opponent's move was much stronger because it didn't leave me this tactic. Um, of doing that but I took anyway I just like almost pre-moved this and uh yeah I just hung a knight straight up but this this move here with the rook was a little bit slow like these pawns are storming you know I take and then I start to solidify around here here I was happy because if they push I've just got check winning the pawn if I if I need to sack the rook and indeed, I don't need to. You know, I can just, the pawn, if the pawn pushes, I take. But I've got my pawn pushing now. So one more game, guys. These are the two games I just played. And, wait, where's the other one? Oh, no. Maybe we'll leave it there. Let's leave it there, guys. I, I thought I had two games ready for you, but I've lost the other one. But uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed that analysis. Showing the power of the windmill. Guys, watch out. Bishop and Rook working together can be just devastating. So... I hope you've never experienced the windmill because it is it's, it's the most emasculate, emasculating thing, whatever that word is. Like, it just makes you feel like a pathetic little worm. <laughs> so, thank you.